Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss the difference between Flash and EE Pro. Since there are more many memories, why we have particularly chosen the topic of Flash and EE Pro? Because every embedded engineer knows Flash and EE Pro is one of the important memory section where we always used to deal with that. And Flash and EE Pro difference is always one of the debatable topic as well. So that is the reason I have chosen difference between flash and e probe. Today, memories can be largely classified into many different categories, but are mainly narrowed down to two of their types. You, as you all know that one is volatile, another one is non-volatile. What is volatile? The data within the volatile memory is stored till the system is capable of. But once the system is turned off, the data within the volatile memory is deleted automatically. The best example for volatile memory is RAM, random access memory and cache memory. What is non-volatile memory? It's a type of memory in which data or information is not lost within the memory even power is shut down. The best example for non-volatile memory is ROM, read-only memory. is the most common example for non-volatile memory. Yeah, now we can discuss about what is flash, why flash is important and in which scenario we will choose flash and which scenario we will choose EEPRO. Earlier, the information placed in, in the chips used photolithographic or mechanical methods which could not be erased. But after some advancement, there are some other methods to erase the memory electron electronically, two of which is or EEPRO and flash memory. Now, you, if you see this slide, the memory has three kinds, one is RAM, hybrid, ROM and RAM has DRAM as RAM, hybrid has NVRAM, flash and EEPROM, ROM has EEPROM, PROM, MOSC ROM. But in most of the cases, RAM and ROM only will be there. Why, what is the meaning of hybrid? Why the hybrid? As memory technology has matured in recent years, the line between RAM and ROM has blurred. Now, several types of memory combine features of both. These devices do not belong to either group and can be collectively referred as hybrid memory devices. So, the hybrid memory devices, that means hybrid memories can be read and written as desired like RAM but maintain their contents without electrical power just like ROM. So, main two important hybrid devices is like Flash and EU ROM. That is the reason I have just chosen this image to represent the, there is a three kind of memory, one is RAM, hybrid and ROM. But in this video, we are more deeply discuss about what is flash and what is EE Pro. First, we can start with what is flash. So, flash memory is a type of electronically erasable programmable read-only memory, meaning flash is a type of or kind of EE Pro. So, mainly, but it, it can also be a standalone memory storage device. The very important thing point is whenever you have a software or firmware that will be stored inside the flash memory. So, as you all, the meaning, the embedded engineer knows how the flash memory will works and at the same time, how the firmware will get stored inside the flash memory. And it's a non-volatile memory, meaning the data remains even when the power is removed. For an example, when you have flashed your software code inside the microcontroller, then when you are doing a restart and when there is no power, still the software code remains same in the same location. And flash mainly uses NAND type memory and size can range anywhere from a GP to hundreds of GP. For an example, you can take example of your pen drive. So, that is very uh, common example for flash. So, you have 8 GB, 16 GB, 32 GB. So, basically flash size can range anywhere from GP to hundreds of GP. So, here you can see the NAND flash. I am planning to take another video for NOR flash and NAND flash and all these things. But in this video, I am mainly focusing on the major difference and how flash memory works. This is a simple flash memory layout. So, this flash memory layout has page, block and sector. So, flash has divided into three levels of granularity. One is page, another one is blocks, third one is sectors. So, here I have taken an example from the Atmel data flash, but different flash type may have a different memory layout. And pages is considered of a section of continuous data memory. Example, 512 bytes of data is locked in the same pages. and multi pages will be grouped as a single block and multiple block will be grouped as a single sector. So, this is a basic concept and memory layout of flash. 
so cells make up pages and pages make up blocks but while pages are written only blocks can be erased blocks means smallest unit that can be erased page is the smallest unit of storage in flash memory the size is several kilobytes of data pages are individually readable and writable however they cannot be directly overwritten instead to modify data on a page the entire page must be erased and sector means it's a fixed amount of contiguous memory space within the flash memory but the sector size is determined during manufacturing process now we'll discuss about what will happen when we are erasing a flash memory so what do you mean by erasing so erasing means it's a region of flash memory means setting all bits to one but now here i really want to take one example to more deeply understand how exactly flash memory works and when you are trying to erase and when you are trying to write a data we can take example of and pencil and paper it's a traditional way to store a data once a single letter or number is written to a given spot on a piece of paper that particular space cannot be legibly written to again so meaning when you are writing some number on in a particular paper or page then again you want to overwrite then you have to erase it right so unless what is written there is erased first flash memory operates in the same way once the data is written to a cell that cell cannot be written to again unless the data that is already there is erased so that's what i have taken an example of pencil and paper so you can imagine when you are writing something on the paper if you want to write it something something else on the same location then you have to erase it first so writing erasing writing to the same spot multiple time means what will happen the paper will eventually wear out the same thing will happen in the flash so when you are trying to write and erase when you are trying to write and erase then the problem will happen there, there is a particularly some uh, amount of life cycles or some amount that means some number always will be there right for how to do the writing erasing and writing again so also it takes more time to erase the spot before writing to it then then it would be simply write to an empty space the same similar way flash memory erases used space by overwriting what is already there so which consumes one of the limited number of writes that cell can have and reduces its usable life and it also take time to perform this action which reduces overall performance you can imagine a case now when you are trying to perform again and again then automatically the performance will get affected so basic example of like pencil and paper please uh, people do not write and erase individual letters on a page and similarly flash does not write and erase individual cells flash writes to and erases groups of cell known as blocks that's what we have seen it in the flash memory layout this is much like pages in a notebook so people write on a page and then move to the next page same way we will deal with the flash memory and erasing data on a block of cells is much like erasing an entire page in a notebook so that's what i have taken an example of pencil and paper the same way you can easily imagine how the erasing and how the handling of flash memory works we will see more deeper a write operation only changes some of the ones to zeros because when you are trying to erase a flash memory meaning you are setting all bit to one so whenever you want to do the write operation so only you will change some of the ones to zeros it cannot change zeros to ones we can take another example if we erase a four byte word at a particular physical address for an example it contains four byte word it's everything is fff then meaning it has everything one then write the four byte word 0x fff the last lsb by two bytes that means the last lsb byte is zero to that address the address will hold the proper value now but we can take another but if we then attempt to write a four byte word for an example this byte to the same address without first erasing then what will happen so see the example here when you are trying to write this particular four byte word in the particular address without first erasing then address will now hold the value of ff Zero zero f f zero zero, but when you first you have written with all ones, meaning first you have done the erase, then when you are trying to write, everything will be proper. So the second write was unable to convert the zero bits back to ones. This is the only very important point you have to keep in your mind when you are going to deal with flashing memory. Why people used to say don't erase flash many times. There will be other problems. So that is the reason.
Now we can see about EEPROM. So what is EEPROM? EEPROM is you all know that electrically erasable programmable read only memory. So here you have to clearly note the first point is read. So especially EEPROM is majorly designed for to read the data. So you can read how many times you want to read the data. There will be no problem. That's what you have to majorly focus on the read. So a rewritable storage chip that holds its content without power. Same because it is a non-volatile uh, memory. So you can you can now think it is like here. It, this is also perform read write erase logic. So and EEPROMs are byte addressable but must be erased before being rewritten. EEPROMs are typically used on circuit boards to store small amounts of instruction and data. Majorly EEPROM can be used inside the embedded devices. For an example, when you are purchasing Arduino or ESP32 or when you want to purchase separate EEPROM chip. So these all are embedded devices. But flash is not like that. Flash is, we have taken an example of pen drive as well, right? Yeah. EEPROM have a lifespan of between 10K and 100K write cycles. K in the sense 1000. So you can multiply with that. This is the maximum write life cycles EEPROM has. But reading, there is unlimited. You can read. That's what I have mentioned. Electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. And it has a faster erase time and higher endurance. But compare than flash. So I'm here, I'm comparing EEPROM with the flash. So compare than flash, EEPROM has a faster erase time. I have a plan to take another video to more clearly understand why flash erase time is very slow okay where you will come to know that how eeprom is faster and it has a higher endurance as well compared especially in the right perspective and 99 percent of the eeproms today have a serial communication protocol such as i2c or spa and five milliseconds to make the newly overwritten data non-volatile so these all are the basic points where we need to keep in our mind when we are thinking about EEPROM. Now, this is the architecture of this is the architecture of EEPROM. So here, if you will look in EEPROM, bytes are arranged into pages, and the read, write, and erase commands can be performed at the byte level. If you will see this image, how a byte is placed on different pages altogether. This commas is for write operation, as old data can be written simply by overwriting the new data. To the required address which is not the case for flash memory this is the especially the new things in eeprom and if you will see them for an example when you have seen the architecture of flash so the mainly what we can observe is stacked in a block manner that means especially the read write and erase operation is common between eeprom and flash now we can see the major difference between flash and eeprom EEPROM and flash memory both support the same commands as I mentioned erase, write and read operations and write cycles are faster in flash than EEPROM but read cycles are faster in EEPROM than in flash. As I mentioned I will take another video to and more clearly understand about why the flash memory how exactly the read cycles why it isn't slow in flash. Okay, flash is a block wise erasable while EEPROM is a byte wise erasable. This is a very important point as an embedded engineer you should know it. Flash is a block wise but EEPROM is a byte wise and EEPROM uses a NOR gate which is comparatively faster than of NAND gate used by the flash memory and a lot of EEPROM devices would take 1 to 10 milliseconds for a byte to be written and 5 to 50 milliseconds to be erased but in the flash devices would require less than 100 microseconds to write but around hundreds of milliseconds to be erased. So this is a major difference between EEPROM and flash and flash uses a parallel interface while EEPROM uses I2C and SPA interface. So especially, especially whatever the, these all are the major difference points you have to note it and some more points I have made as a table to more clearly understand for the beginners to under how you, how, how you can understand the flash and EEPROM. So flash again based on NAND gates, EEPROM based on NOR gates and in flash side memory access is sequential so read is slower this is the main reason and eepro memory access is random so read is faster and flash it's cheaper but eepro is costly so now might be you can imagine now why most of the cases we are preferring the flash and mainly used for program storage and data storage especially in the flash case but eepro is mainly used application to store configuration data compared in the endurance point of view the flash is less endurance than eepro EEPROM is more endurance than flash and size of flash is GP, EEPROM is in KP to MB. Life cycle is more than EEPROM because we have seen in a previous slide 
how many milliseconds it will take and microseconds it will take as well. And EEPROM life cycle is lesser than flash. And parallel interface will be used for the microcontroller in the case of flash. But in EEPROM case, I2C or ESP interface. And USB, for an example of flash, USB thumb drives, hard disk, and other mass storage media uses flash memory. But EEPROM, mainly the embedded boards. Hope you got a clear idea about flash and EEPROM. And I am planning to create a separate playlist to understand about the memories because I am planning to take more videos. What is NAR flash? What is NAND? And it was, what is especially about RAM, ROM? More deeper about all the memory concepts. So you can watch our memory playlist if you want to understand more about the microcontroller memories. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends. If you want to stay with us for more technical contents, please subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.